Yeah, Omaniala and Tom Sahira, king and queen regnant of the 100 meters at the Commonwealth Games. The Kenyan besting the defending champion from South Africa, Asimbini and uh, Tom Sahira after a difficult season for her. At least she has chalked up some, well, some success that will make sense of the campaign that she has had so far. That's the greeting as we welcome you to a Commonwealth tonight. My name is George Davis and there is a lot of action to review uh, from earlier today at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, England. I look at the, well, we will look at the medal team first before I introduce my panel. Of course, it's the same star-studded panel that has been serving you so well since day one. Look at the Aussies, no su uh, surprise is there 123 to their name as i told you they came into these games australia with 2416 medals to their name in commonwealth history and they're just hoovering them up especially in the pool england new zealand canada you the, the usual suspects make out the top four scotland a bit of a surprise to see them in five south africa india wales malaysia nigeria round out the top 10 then on the second page we're looking for jamaica they're in 17th place now with three medals to their name and uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Nicholas Paul putting them on the board with a medal of every color uh, for the fast man on two wheels. It goes down to number 30, Namibia. And uh, what this means is that there are at least, at least 30 uh, countries with at least two medals to their name. All right. So based on the action to review today, uh, my panel, let me introduce them over there to Thompson. Needs no introduction, neither does Leighton Levy. Leighton gets, well, Leighton will not get paid for this edition of the show because he didn't wear his sportsman <laughs> shirt. So, <laughs> Leighton is he's being a bad boy today. Uh, gentlemen, let's get right to it. Let's start with the men's 100 meters first. Leave the women for, women for last. Well, I wanted to leave the women for last, but my producer says women first. All right, fine. Uh, usually you leave the best one for last, and the women was the best one, but ne 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 nevertheless. Elaine Thompson here. A difficult season for various reasons and uh, you know there are people who will say well you shouldn't have changed coach but that's water under the bridge she has changed coach she's under new management now and I don't know about you guys the Elaine Thompson here I saw at in Eugene didn't exude the confidence that I normally see with her not that she's as extroverted as Shelly and Fraser Price or even as serious as Sharika Jackson but there was a something off she wasn't at her best. These Commonwealth Games provided not quite redemption, Oba, but a chance for her to get her hands on something that would count as success. How do you assess how she went about her work in that 100 meters final? Yeah, I, I totally agree. This season has not been the stellar year for her that she had last year, but every season brings with it new challenges. She had some um, significant changes, as you just highlighted. And to be able to come away with hardware, I think, is important. At the end of the day, she has fast times. She has Olympic championships underneath her belt. This is another championship. And in history, that's all they're going to look at. Eventually, someone will run faster. But her name now is in the history books of the Commonwealth Games as the 2022 Commonwealth champion in the 100 meters. Yeah, let, let's look at the replay before we bring Leighton uh, Levy in. Here she is, Tom Zahira, getting the reception that she deserves based on her status. The commentators kept stressing that this was a woman who is one of the greatest of all time. Very happy that they drummed that into the ears of the few people who wouldn't know. And Elaine Thompson here, 11.05 in the semis. And then she came and she lowered the time significantly. Let's look at the race. Let's take the race. Well, it's a clean start. It's a pretty even start as well. The Nigerian going well in leg number three. Thompson here, though, the Jamaican running well in leg number four. Elaine Thompson here takes the gold medal here in Birmingham. 10.95 seconds. The five-time Olympic champion. The one and 200-meter champion in Rio and Tokyo at the Olympic Games. The athlete that had never won an individual Commonwealth medal at all takes the gold here. Elaine, what a gutsy performance tonight. You had to dig deep, but you found a way to come out on top. Talk to me about that race. Um, I'm grateful for my first Commonwealth title. You know, I saw her leading, so I had to dig for this one. <laughs> but I'm just grateful that I crossed the line healthy. I'm just happy. <laughs> you know, I need to start calling you the Games girl. You've, you've won the Olympic Games. You have five gold medals. You've won the Pan American Games. And now you've won the Commonwealth Games. You love, you love it when it's games at the end. Well, I guess 
some games, babe, but I'm just grateful, you know, my team said, come out here and do Commonwealth, you know. I'm just grateful that I kept this goal. I'm just grateful. 10.95 and the execution, how do you feel about that? I don't think I executed how best I wanted, but nevertheless, I team came out on the top and win. I wanted to get that championship record, 10.95, but it didn't work out, but I'm still grateful. Are you any closer to, to understanding whether your body will be able to go 200 as well? Well, I decide tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and we sh we'll surely see you in the 4x1 though. Definitely. Well, congratulations right, and we look so forward much. to seeing right, you. Congrats again. Now, Leighton Levy, human beings from time immemorial have always had need for an elixir. As we said, the season not the best for Mrs. Thompson here. Here was a chance to drink from the well of an elixir, and she drank heartily. Very, very heartily, and I think this would be a nice boost for her, for what, you know, both of you have already described as a challenging season for her. So to come away with the Commonwealth title, not the biggest title in the world, but it's a title nonetheless, is something that she can look back on as an achievement and an accomplishment in what has been a challenging season for her. Bronze at the World Championships is nothing to sneeze at, however. The thing is, that is not the goal that we saw from her last year at the Olympic Games. This now adds a little bit more sheen to the season for her. So it's actually, so, you know, you get on with the, with the analogy of the elixir because this now will push her towards the, the end of the season. We were expected to run a couple of Diamond League meets at the end of the season and towards the end of the season and come away thinking that this was not such a bad season after all. And, and Oba, you know, one of the pleasing things for me from this run, I was very happy watching the clock. No, I, I, I wasn't expecting 10 7s, 10 8s, but 10 95, sub 11 over should also give her an extra boost that, okay, there is something there after all. I can still make good from this season if I can produce a sub-11 here to win this gold medal. Absolutely, and reports are that the weather was chilly. Mm. I think it was <sighs> around 18 or 20 degrees Celsius. And so the, the performances tonight reflected the fact that it wasn't the warmest weather. She did clock under 11 seconds. And good form, as she said, coming away healthy. It's one of the big things, yeah. you know, to go year in, year out. And we know she's had some injury uh, issues plague her in the past. So to be able to come to a championships, back-to-back -back championships within uh, basically 10 days of each other and to be able to perform like this is very encouraging. And don't forget that over the next couple of years, there's the world championships next year, and then we're on to Paris 2024. Yes. So effectively, there's no time for her to sit on her laurels. Yes. And she must feel an immense amount of pressure. Th there's one thing, you know, when you're up and coming, but when you're at the top, when, yes. you, when you're creating history, you become the target. And so for her to be able to come out and get this win must be great for her. She said it, and hopefully she'll be able to build upon this for the rest of the season and in the years to come. Leighton, I know you're itching to talk about these silver medalists in this event. I'm also <laughs> itching to hear you talk about these silver medalists. St. Lucia's finest, young Julian Alfred, she's announced herself to the world. Uh, I don't like to quote Donald Trump, Leighton, but I have to quote him here. <laughs> bigly. <laughs> she's come bigly this year. What a run for silver. Listen, Julian Alfred has had a challenging time the last few years, huh? She, had, she came off social media a couple of years ago because the, negative, the negativity got to her. She returns this season in the NCAAs. She runs 10.81, which makes her, outside of Jamaica, the fastest woman in the Caribbean in history. Okay, 10.81, the only people faster are Sherwin Simpson, of course, the big three from Jamaica, um, Merle yeah. Naughty, um, Sherwin Simpson, you know, it's, it's, and Sherika Jackson, so that's a seven. You know, so for her to come here especially after being disqualified at the World Championships, which she would have been down from that experience, her, her first major championship representing St. Lucia. And to come to the Commonwealth Games and run second behind the fastest woman of all time, 11.01, a time similar to the time that she won the NCAA title in, you know, what more can you say? She's a happy girl right now. I sent her congratulatory messages, and she sent back an emphatic thank you because I think she knows what this means for her individually in a season that... She accomplished much, but this is like icing on the cake for her. Before I hear from Obadeli on uh, Julian Alfred, let's hear her interview done with Ricardo Chambers. Julian Alfred. What a performance. What an amazing performance from start to finish. Just take me through that and what this Commonwealth Games silver medal means to you. So my goal this round, the final, was to work on the ending of my race. 
in the semis. It's my last 30 meters wasn't the best, so when I was warming up, Coach Flo and I worked on that so much, but I felt so happy. I kind of just felt that it's just an overwhelming feeling, and man, glory be to God because. He has a plan for you and nobody else can take us away from you. I know you told me after your first round that you, you don't look back, you look ahead and you, you, you overcome disappointments pretty well. But how much does this make up for that massive disappointment from Eugene? Um, it means so much. And I'm thankful for my coach, Coach Edric Floreal, because if it wasn't for him, like I said in the, in the, after the prelims, he gave me only one night to get over it, cry it out. And we were back to work the next day, and uh, it's a great feeling. I can just imagine everybody in St. Lucia celebrating right now this uh, silver medal and being able to push the, the Olympic champion in the way you did. What do you have to say to your people back home? Um, it's my last race of the season, and I want to say thank you for all the support. I didn't get a chance to say it throughout the season because I was off social media. But thank you all so, so, so much for supporting me throughout the entire season, and I really appreciate you all. NCAA indoor record holder, NCAA outdoor champion, now Commonwealth Games silver medalist. You can put that down as an amazing year. Congratulations, Julian Alfred, and all the best going forward. Thank you so much. Yeah, Oba, I won't be, 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 be trite and say, oh, this should feel like a gold. But what, I'm, what I want to say is this. This performance was so good from this young woman. This achievement is so tremendous that there can be no criticism from any quarter about what Julian Alfred has achieved at these Commonwealth Games, especially in that 100 meters final. Absolutely. Um, we heard about some of her struggles over the last two years. And to be a young person and to be able to find it within yourself to bounce back, it's, it's a great thing. Also, when I look at her, I see so much potential. Like, her upper body reminds me the way that she runs, reminds me a little bit of Merlin Audi. Her, her lower body, she, you know, she has a lot of turnover, but I think over time when they work with her and get her stride length increased, I believe that she is going to be one of the, the, the absolute greats. Um, she has already stamped herself as being capable uh, at Eugene before the false start. Remember that she had run, I think, 11.05 in the heats, uh -huh. and I believe that she probably would have made the finals. Here in the first round, she looked a little bit shaky at the start. Uh, in the semifinal, her start was on. Again, in the final, it was on. A couple of things I know they'll go back and work on. But as you see here, she is right there with Elaine. And when, when you look at the splits, because they, they released the, the data from the races, she was right there with Elaine, stride for stride, up until around 60 meters. So I think that once they get that together, she's going to be a real force in the years to come. Yeah. Just before we go to the main lane, uh, our producer is transitioning us, but... You have to, I have to ask you to say a word about the bronze medalist, Daryl Nita, because I, I'm of the view that the English choke on the big occasions. Well, they didn't choke at Wembley on Sunday, the Lionesses didn't, mm -hmm. in winning the European Championships in football. But I was presently surprised to see an English woman deliver in front of a crowd that came to see an English woman stand on that podium. Yeah, but I think a lot of the pressure came from the semi final run, which ran 1090, which was, I think, a PB for her as well. Yes. So, you know, coming to repeat that kind of performance in the final was going to be always be difficult. But I, th I thought she acquitted herself well, and of course, to end up on the podium, you know, is a big win for her because Daryl Nita, over the last two years, was in the shadow of um, Dina, Dina Asha Smith. Smith, and now she's emerged in her own light, and I think this is this is a, another step forward for her. So you know, kudos to her as well. All right, what about the men's 100 meters final? Let's take it from the start. Sabina at the moment, Amanyala's going away with this one, he will not be caught, this is justice for the man who couldn't do himself justice in Eugene, he takes the goal for Kenya, 10-0-2 into a slight headwind, minus 0.9, but daylight between Ferdinand Amanyala of Kenya and the rest, maybe about a metre's difference in it. And the winning time, well, it doesn't matter a hoot. Who cares that it wasn't under 10 seconds? It was brilliant running at the start. He got out of the block so well, put the others under pressure, and Roman Yala has gold. And we talk about the Kenyans being the long-distance specialists. They dominate at cross-country. They're great at steeplechase, 5,000, 10,000. This guy is from the other end.
Yeah, Ferdinand Omaniala dethroning the defending champion, Akani Sembini. Uh, let's hear what Ferdinand Omaniala had to say. Ferdinand Omaniala, what a performance tonight. You are the Commonwealth Games champion, the first Kenyan to win the men's 100 title here at the Commonwealth Games. You must be elated. Yeah, of course, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, like, who does not, be ha who cannot be happy about this? So, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy about this, and it's something that we've been planning all along since the start of the season, and I'm happy that we've achieved it. How much does this make up for the disappointment of Eugene? <laughs> Um, I'm the guy who doesn't look back. We just look forward and we hope for the better. And everything happens for a reason. No regrets, you just learn. Well, congratulations. Amazing performance tonight. All the best going forward. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Oba, at the point where he was waiting on that visa to get to Eugene, he must have felt that fate was conspiring to undermine his dreams of greatness. And then, landing in Birmingham, the man took fate into his own hands and made his own fate. That was a tremendous accomplishment from the Kenyan. Yes, indeed. Uh, he was the most dominant runner, I think, for the entire games. Um, he came in of, with the fastest time. I think his personal best is 9.77, yeah, which he did last year. And then he started the season by beating the American, Fred Curley, who is now the world champion in Nairobi, running 9.85, I believe, which was the fastest time of the year. And... With the mix-up in Eugene, he looked, based on what we see here, he looked like if he might have been able to make the finals. So to be able to come here and to win so decisively, um, it's not full redemption because I'm sure he would have liked to have done it with everyone there. Yes. But this indeed shows that at this particular point in time, um, I would probably rate him as the second best in the Commonwealth after, of course, Oblique Seville yes. from Jamaica. Yes. Uh, Leighton, you can't take anything away from Ferdinand Omaniala. And uh, w what I saw, and I wish somebody was recording me, when they walked out and they were introduced, I looked at body language. I thought this man wore the demeanor of a man who was wanting to win that gold medal. I didn't get that from Simbini. Again, personalities are different. Uh, Obas is different from mine. Mm. Obas is different from mm. Anil's. Well, everybody's different from <laughs> Anil's. Yeah? I, I, but, but, but I just saw in Simbini as if it wasn't quite there. And, 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 and sometimes, I mean, Oba knows it's better than us. Sprinters especially, you go to the start line and you evoke a vibe that tells yourself and tells your rivals, I am the man to beat. I am the one you all have to be running to catch, and nobody could catch Omanyala. Listen, Omanyala has been one of the most confident sprinters I've seen in a long time. Earlier this season, he says he's going to break the same boost record of 958. Lofty ambitions, nonetheless, but the fact that you believe you can do it is the same kind of confidence you saw at the start here today. Because he came to this final thinking that there's nobody in this field who has run as fast as I have this year. Mm -hmm. There's nobody in this field who can possibly beat me outside of the Americans. So guess what? This is my race to win. And that's exactly what he did. His confidence is it's nice to see when an athlete comes to a, the party with that kind of confidence because that is what gives them the edge. Simbini has not been the same as the guy who won in 2018. It's a mm -hmm. little bit slower, not as sharp, not as proficient as he used to be. And then the rest of the field was kind of follow for yeah. him because the Sri Lankan finished third. <laughs> so you're looking at a situation where, Sri La what do you know Sri Lankans for? Cricket, mm -hmm. not track and field. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and of course, you know, the, the, the 2000, was it 96 or 2000 silver medalist at the Olympics? That, the name who was, who you just brought up. Susan Thika Jayasinghe. There you go. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so you oh see, it's, it's, it was a field that he knew he had. And it was just about executing and getting it done because everything is clear on paper, but you have to run the races. And that's exactly what he did. He ran the race. Oba, let me provoke you now. I sat watching this race and I said to myself, how is it eight men are lining up in the final of the Commonwealth Games, 100 meters, and not even one Caribbean athlete is at the start line? Yeah, that's amazing. It's disappointing. Um... I think this is the first time since 1982 where that has happened. And I, would have, I expected coming into the, these uh, games that we may, may have been able to have one or two represent. It wasn't the fastest games. You, you look there and you see uh, uh, 
Ten zero two. Ten zero two winning. Yeah. Ten one four one right. runs. Mm. I, exactly. Ten one four one runs. Ten twenty was the last time to make it into the into the finals. The season and personal best of so many of our athletes are in either sub ten or ten point zero. That's well within their realm to be able to accomplish. So I think our athletes did not compete to the level that they were supposed to be at. And when you consider that, some of these athletes, I, I think you have to be realistic. At the World Championships, even though you would like to believe that you can make the finals, the truth is where the game is right now, if you're not able to run about 9.95 or better, don't really expect yourself to make uh, a championship in terms of Olympic or World Championship. However, at the Commonwealth Games, if you can run 10-10, I think you can make a final. And it was shown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think some of these uh, athletes and their coaches should have probably used the World Championships to get warm, but really target to peak here at the Commonwealth Games. So it's ab our, our absence is glaring. Um, I'm hopeful that next year we solve this and that this is an aberration and not uh, the start of a trend. But um, disappointing uh, in terms of the ones who have been there before. Yes. We know that there were some new faces there, yes. like Conroy Jones and, and those. We give them a pass, but hopefully next time this doesn't repeat. Not Leighton, I'm mortgaging my future by giving you 25 seconds. Notwithstanding the win factor. Yes. If Timbogo was in this race, he would have destroyed this field. Yes. 991. And Krumi would have won based on the 10 that he ran yesterday yes. in the world under 19 championships. So, yeah, the, the quality wasn't there. For the Jamaicans, I think it was, for Conroy Jones, a developmental st step. For Kemar Bailey Cole, it was getting back to senior competition after. Remember, he was, the last time he was at the Commonwealth Games was in 2014 when yes. he won the title. Yes. He's not the same sprinter right at this point. And it showed in the semifinals. 10 or 4 national championships, had he run that time here, he would have been the silver medalist. The thing is, they, I don't think either it was ready for this occasion, and it showed. Yeah, and, and the quality of the times as we go to the break, something to also consider. I was telling Oba in the prep room, 1970, they changed from 100 yards to 100 meters. Since then in the Commonwealth Games, only four times, only four times has the gold medalist gone sub-10. Kim Collins did it. Atto Bolden did it for that Games record 9.88 in 1998. And of course, the great Linford Christie did twice, 9.93 and then 9.91. The previous Games record broken by Atto Bolden. So usually 10 and change gives you a medal at the Commonwealth Games. And even with that standard, we couldn't get a Caribbean man into the final. That's not good. We take a break, come back with more. It's Commonwealth Today right here on Sportsmax. in the uh, shot put final. She is the defending champion. And she opened with 17.98, was second to Wishy of New Zealand, her opener, 18.84. She hasn't been able to improve upon. Wishy produced 18.54 in the second round, so had the two best throws of the competition. But that is big from Danielle thomas Dodd. That is out towards 19 metres, and that will take the lead, I think. Not by much. Remember Wishy, 1884. This one coming down pretty much on the 19-metre line. Went down in qualifying in Tokyo. 18 metres, 98 in Cisco. 18, 98 metres for Daniel Thomas Dodd. Gentlemen, let, let me say that I'm not one of those who criticise athletes and talk about disappointment and winning silver and winning bronze is a disappointment. Hell no, I've never won a medal. It takes a lot to do that. So an athlete who makes a final or wins a medal, I'm congratulating rather than criticising. But, and I'm not criticising, based on the opening rounds, I said to myself, oh, Daniel has this in the bag. But it was not to be. Well, remember, we did discuss it. And uh, was it with Lance where Lance, we talked about the Lance. fact that Mitten and, um, and Wishy had better throws than Daniel this season. Um, so it was going to be between those three, we thought. And I thought the only mistake that Daniel may have made in this competition is not to get over 19 meters because 1902 won. 1902 was 10th in Oregon. Mm. Uh, so she needed to have gone closer to her personal best of 19.3. 
Had she done that, she would have been comfortable. But then, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is on the day. She did her best on the day, but just wasn't good enough. Yeah, over. Yeah, I, and I agree. And she was leading all the way down to the last round, as we see here, Mitten, who is actually a 2033 thrower at her best and finished fourth at the recently concluded Eugene World Championships. She won it on her final throw. Mm -hmm. And in a situation like that, you know, Danielle came back, but she was unable to respond that late. And I, I guess with the temperatures dropping, you are also usually not warm. And, you know, she came with a medal. And although it wasn't gold, considering that she has not performed as well at the last two global championships, the Olympic Games and the World Championships, to be back on the podium, I think this is going to be a big boost. And when we look at how excited she was last uh, I guess two days ago at the qualifier yes. after that to see her come out and to be able to perform at this level podium level performance it's great yeah this is the sixth throw late and this is when she's trying to respond uh, to Mitten and uh, yeah, Mitten with the Mitten with the equivalent of a Hail Mary with yep. the shot <laughs> yeah <laughs> sometimes quarterbacks throw those and, and, and they stick with the receiver but, yeah, uh, Daniel just not being able to produce what was required there. Which, which is kind of surprising because one of the things that Daniel is known for is to be able to respond to throws. I mm. mean, she, she has this knack of producing her best throw in her last couple of throws. We've seen it uh, indoors. We've seen it outdoors. And, unfortunately, she was unable to find that today. So it's, it's just one of those things where you give it your best shot on the day and somebody just happened to be a little bit better. This is what, four centimeters? I mean, yeah. you can't really, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's, it's this. Yeah, you know, the, so it's, it's that, that quality you spoke of is a trait of the great shot putters, mm. able to respond to what the competition throws down. Let's hear what Daniel Thomas had to say post-event. Daniel Thomas, the stout defense of your Commonwealth Games title. You had the lead up to the penultimate throw of the competition, snatched away, losing by five centimeters. What's the feeling at the end of all that? Um, I, I honestly, I'm not disappointed at all. Um, uh, it's a good place to finish in the medals again. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to come back after four years and it's essentially try to defend a title. I'm not disappointed. I did want a personal best or a, at least a season's best out of this competition. I didn't get, I didn't quite get it. Um, I, I started to find my rhythm too late. Um, but however, I am happy because I'm, I'm starting to feel like myself again, you know. I um you know I struggled a lot mentally after Doha because you know I would get big throws and then you know it would it would be called a foul. So then over the past you know couple of seasons I've been very cautious when it comes out to getting big throws and being scared of essentially fouling them. And I think today I kind of made um, a big leap in terms of you know finding that aggression that I had you know in terms of competition and, and trying to chase a throw in terms of. Um, not being scared to fall it. So I think today was a big success for me in terms of getting over that mental barrier that I've had over the past two years. Um, so I would say it was definitely a success for me. Well, definitely everyone who watched that Doha 2019 World Championship will not forget that throw that so many people thought was indeed legal and it was ruled um, to be a fall. But talk to me about how you've been able to overcome that. What sort of work have you been able to do on the, on the mental psyche in, in, in being able to overcome that 2019 disappointment? Um, to be honest, um, up until this point, I, I still wasn't over it because, you know, every... Especially after, you know, the competition, you would get the question of, you know, do you think it was a foul? But then it kind of, the decision kind of is left upon me to answer the question because no one could see the replay. No one, no one has seen, you know, where it would have been called a foul. So, like, I struggled a lot with it um, over the past um, two seasons. And I think um, because of that, like, like, fear is a hell of a thing. Like, it feels like... You know, it, it makes you you kind of cripple in a sense, and I think that's where I was um, mentally because, you know, when I'm in practice and I'm, I'm relaxed because I'm not worried about if I have to, you know, if I would fold the, the throws and stuff like that, I see the good distances, but then once it comes down to competition, that fear kind of kicks in because, you know, it, it's it's happened before, and, and so, like, that the, the fear of not having it happen again kind of restricts me in a sense where... I don't want it to happen again. So I think today um, the competition kind of allowed me to feel like old Danny. Like I can be aggressive. I can, you know, try to chase a throw without that fear of getting, you know, called for a foul. So I think for me today I did allow myself to kind of get over that mental barrier. And so I'm excited moving forward. Yeah. Sorry to have to dwell on this one a little bit, but I remember it. I was watching on television and I thought to myself, 
that's definitely going to be overturned. Can you remind us, was there a protest lodged and what really happened? There was a protest lodged. Um, I think the, the person that was in charge of the protesting at the time was um, Donald Quarry. Um, he did go and lodge a protest right after the competition. He said that um, they showed him a video, um, and but then went the next day when I went back to um, to collect the medal for the medal ceremony, I asked if I could actually see the video for myself. They said that they didn't have a specific angle. Um, so, but then they found some video, showed it to me, and said, "Well, this is the video. This is one that they called for a foul." But yet, you know, during the competition, everyone had their replays, but except my throw. So, you know, but it is what it is, and I'm trying to get over it uh, mentally. And so, I'm, I'm kind of in a place now where I'm starting to get over. It. Was it measured? I don't know. Wow. I didn't ask. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was 2019. It's now, now 2022. 2020, yep. You have gotten another Commonwealth Games. Uh, thank you very much for that, Ricardo. Imagine um, the mental block that she speaks about, gentlemen. It's kind of like driving, uh, well, this may be an oxymoron, high-performance race car. <laughs> but it's maybe like driving a high-performance yeah. car with a handbrake up. Kind of. Yeah, yes, yeah. In, in, indeed. And I think it's good that she spoke so openly about things. A lot of times people believe that just because you've been gifted physically, it means that, and, and you're in shape, means that everything will fall together. And as she clearly said, uh, even at her level, mm -hmm. with her accomplishments, she had this tick in her mind which prevented her from moving forward. And I think that's how it is for, for human beings in so many aspects of life, whether it's something that we experienced or we noticed or observe others, and, and it creates a barrier for us to overcome. And so you might look at it as, well, you only came second, you didn't defend your title. But for her, this is hopefully a turning point. And I think that's the most instructive thing. You know, we learn so much from uh, our own lives and the lives of others. So hopefully this is instructive for other people when they face things to be able to, things that are obstacles, that they be able to look at it and then move forward. Yeah, Leighton, and quickly for her, and uh, speaking in, 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 in the context of those athletes who have skipped these games, it was important for her to come in the white heat of competition to try and see if she could put behind that disappointment and produce her best. And uh, this performance today would have told her that, yeah, Daniel, you can get back on track now. And it's possible, yes. And it's a lot, as, as, you, as she said, you know, speaking about it, first of all, articulating the issue that she has helps with the healing process. I remember watching that throw, mm -hmm. and I thought it was legal, but mm -hmm. I wasn't there. Yeah. The thing is, for her now to act, you know, acknowledge the, the difficulty and to embrace it, and then to move forward is a big step forward, not physically, but me mentally. A lot of people take for granted the idea that the physical part over, over, I mean, outweighs the mental side of yes. things. But that's not necessarily the case, because uh, as we mentioned about Amalayala a while ago, the belief factor is crucial yes. to success. And for her to be able to continue to perform at this high level now, despite that issue, you know, it speaks to her progress, and it's, it's a nice step forward for her. Before we go to the break, gentlemen, we have to talk about the lone Caribbean man in the 800 meters final, Navaski Anderson uh, from Jamaica, uh, without even, uh, well, we don't have enough time to sneak in the, the, the replay of the race here. But um, tactically, uh, Oba, he has to run a particular way to, to be seen to best advantage because he lacks the foot speed over the, 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 the final 80, 100 meters, last 100 meters of the, of, of the event to really uh, cause serious trouble to men who are more experienced than him at this level. And good to see him in the final. And let's see what he can do from here. Absolutely. He's had a long college season and he finished second at the NCAA championships a few months ago. And it's good that he's now competing internationally wearing Jamaica colors. He set a, a new national record this, this year, but yes. the 800 is a cerebral race. You, you get the physical shape, but then you have to be able to uh, think through the race on your feet, literally. Mm -hmm. And it's good that he was able to make it to the finals. Hopefully, y the thing about the 800, you never know how fast or slow it's going to be. So you physically need to be in shape for it, but then you always have to be thinking and thinking. So this is going to be a good test for him. And hopefully he does well in the finals. Yeah. Uh, Leighton, what do you make of his prospects in that final? I don't know. It's, it, the times haven't been particularly exciting this yes, year. Yes, yes. So and he might, what, 147.79? Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. use the range, he's well within the possibility of getting a medal, but he has to run well. 145.02, a new national record. The reality is, however, 
that he's going to have to run a little, maybe run a little bit faster to guarantee himself a minute. This is the part of the race I'm talking about, Lee, because he sees the kick on the outside, but he can't respond because he doesn't have this foot speed. No, I think, I think part of that is also, you know, when you're at a certain part of the race and the exhaustion takes over, because yeah. remember, he's had a long season. Yes. You know, physically, he might not have been able to, uh, be able to find And he energy. was pushing the space as yeah. well. So, right. so yeah. you know, and, and the strategy was probably different where he's, he was just pushing to be able to get in control of where he finishes in the race and expended enough energy not to be able to respond. The thing is, in the final, he come fresh. He's now it's been a few weeks, it's been over a month since NCAA finals. He's looked tired in Oregon. Yeah. So maybe he uh, has an opportunity here to maybe replicate that 145 which could get him on the podium. Yeah, one more race left for Navaski Anderson this season. Let's hear what he had to say to Ricardo Chambers after the event. Yeah, speaking with the Jamaican champion, Navaski Anderson, 147.79, a third place finish. You still have a shot of getting through to the final. We're not 100% sure yet. But first of all, compare this performance to what happened at the World Championships in Eugene. Um, at the World Championships, compared to this performance, this was much more smoother performance. And um, I know down deep, have quality performances in me. I just got to, you know, on the day and the time, I just forget it out. Yeah. Take me through this one. You seemed in pretty good positions for most of the race. Um, maybe just didn't have that finishing burst coming home to get in the top two, but still was a quality run. Take me through it. Um, you know, um, I followed my coach's instruction, which was went out, put myself in proper position, you know, and just... Stay, stayed in striking distance. So, um, 147.79, not my best run, but hopefully that can take me through to the final. And I would be happy knowing this would be my first global championship finals. Well, we certainly hope you get in there as well and all the best going forward. Um, the people's champion is the name and you're sticking to it and we're sticking to it. That's you right. remain the people's champion. Well done. I appreciate it. Thank you. Love you, Jamaica. Just as we go to the break, over quickly, you talked about this being education for him against the, the seasoned pros on this, on, uh, at this level. Is it likely that he can learn anything and adapt to those lessons in time to run even better in the final than he did in the semis? Sure, and the, and the thing about it is uh, each race is new. The mm. 800 meters, like I said, it's a thinking race. So if his coach said, go, get yourself into good position, that's the thing. What does good position mean for each race is the f it's going to be important. Mm. So when the finals come around, um, they'll probably give the same instruction. Keep yourself out of trouble. It's a rhythm race. You don't want your rhythm to be broken. You don't want to get boxed in. Mm. You don't want to, especially uh, coming into the home stretch, being careful not to let someone slip in on the inside. So I'm sure they'll discuss those things. The coach probably will look at who else is in the final. There are some very experienced runners in mm. the final. And I think this is going to be a really good experience for him. And who knows? Yeah, yeah. after a long season of Aski Anderson, one more race in it. Uh, let's hope that he can perform in a way that will make him proud at the end of it. We take a break here on Commonwealth Tonight. Commonwealth Today, it's the same thing. I'm back with more <laughs> after these. <laughs> and the pedigree we have that on the set in abundance one man who has done it and another man who has coached people who've done it and roberts has uh, subbed himself in usually the coach subs you in and roberts has subbed himself in late levy has gone for an early break so what we're going to talk about now is the 400 meters for men and women we're going to start with the women first and uh, the best place to start is with the outstanding barbadian the uh, newly minted world championship bronze medalist shade williams from barbados let's see how she went to work over the final 200 meters of her event close down on Valaboy. Both Williams on the inside going well. Jody for England went out really aggressively, but Sade right up on her shoulder now coming through on the inside. And Zoe Clark running well now reeling in the Jamaican who started hard. 
Shade Williams leading on the inside. A lovely flowing stride, as I said, brimming with confidence. Good run by Jodie Williams at the moment. She's in second place with Zoe Clark coming through. McGregor's tying up a little bit, the Jamaican. Shade Williams from Zoe Clark and Jody Williams. They are the three qualifiers, 51.67. Not quite as quick as we saw from Victoria Uhurugu in the first of the heats, but this is a young woman flying at the moment, a world championship medalist. She has the whole nation back home. Proud Oba, in terms of the eye test, she passed it with flying colors. Absolutely, she's the class of the field, uh, coming off her 49.75 Barbados record. Uh, world Championship bronze medal. Uh, this is two seconds slower. It looks so easy. Mm -hmm. It's 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 scary. So hopefully um, we're in for a treat and Barbados will be able to uh, get. She'll be able to get through the semifinals and and onto the top of the podium. That's yeah. what I see. Yeah, and it, it fits into the narrative that you've advanced on this show. Keep your powder dry. Keep enough in the tank for the championship round. She did just enough to get through from the opening heat and set her mind for the bigger challenges ahead. Well, she is so good in this field. Her powder could be wet. It could be damp. They can't touch her. Um, but I could see, as a coach, coming off the high of the World Championship focus and getting that medal for Barbados. I, while you all say it was very easy, I saw a little bit of struggle. You said, you said we were going to watch 200. We saw 300 meters. And really and truly, obviously from celebration, from uh, making sure, staying up late, excitement that the body and then travel, is going to be a little tired. She's the class of the field. She will win. I respect her for understanding the importance of a Commonwealth medal for her little island, Barbados, and taking the time and showing the respect to her country, men and women, to come here and win the gold. As you see, when she's coming around here, she wants to go easy and shut it down. But uh, in, the, in Oregon, I didn't see the shoulders moving that much and the head moving. So while she's shutting it down, now there's some things in a 400. Sometimes you think you shut it down and you save energy. But in a 400, sometimes even if you shut it down, you still get tired because the lactic acid is already filling up in your muscles. And when you finish the race and you're walking down to get your water to cool down, your muscles still fill up. So sometimes you'd see some people just run through because the benefits of shutting it down in a 400 are not really that much. The risk is higher in a 100 or 200. There's clear benefits, as Oba would tell you. Oh, 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 oh. just before we go to Alia Abrams, Oba, fitting in with the Anil narrative. When Ricardo was waiting to interview Shade, he told us that she stood with them for between five and seven minutes trying to catch her breath. And that she was so enervated after, even though, as I said, she passed the eye test, that he said, you know what? Go, we talk another time. So it, 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 it fits into what he's saying, that there was some effort expended, even though she appeared to do it with something to spare. Yeah, this is probably the hardest run that she's done since the World, World Championship Championships. Finals. So just like if you take time off, you come back. It doesn't mean that you are out of shape. Yes. You know, you're out of race shape. She has this under her belt. She ran a hard 300, which is probably what I think they said do. Run hard 300, check, make sure you're safe. Take it down gradually so that you don't compromise getting that big cue, yes. qualifying first. And I think that's just what she did. I suspect that she will go faster in the semifinals and, and then maybe, depends on, on, on their approach, whether to uncork something big for the finals yes. or to do enough to win and think about the European season after. Something over there that I never understood. If she's the fastest entry time and so on, why is she in lane two? You see in swimming, we know the fastest entry time, you're in lane four and you come out, lane five, three, so on. Tell Random. the people the difference with the track and field. Yeah, random draw first round, and thereafter they see based on your position in the previous round yeah. and the time in the previous yep. round. Yep. Simple you like see, that. so swimming is a little bit better Dif because if you are a class act, it shouldn't be random. Yeah. I've earned my lane, yeah. and I think if you're in lane four, you can pace yourself better. You don't have to run that 300 so hard and then look because they put you way back. You know, you have to. Pick up the stagger. Point the man is making is that Adam Peter won't turn up for the 50 meter uh, uh, breaststroke and get lane eight.
Just won't happen. Won't Lane happen. four. There Correct. you go. All right. Uh, what about <laughs> Alia Abrams from Guyana? She finished second in her heat. We just saw uh, a little run of it there. Mr. Producer, if you're kind enough, could we look at that again? Because we want to see how the Guyanese fared in that um, event. Alia Abrams on the outside, one of the outside lanes. And uh, she qualifies for the next round, the semifinals. Oh, well, I was waiting for you to play, but let's go, let's go. From right and uh, Mutura of Kenya. Got a bit of work to do at the moment in four. Good running two in lane two from Kara Constantine of Canada. But on the outside, probably going best of all is Abrams of Guyana. The Guyana athlete leading off the final bend into the straight, although really good running and a well-judged race from the Canadian Constantine in two. So far, Jürgen's got a bit of work to do. Jürgen in the blue for Scotland nearest the camera, getting into third place. The winner's going to go to Constantine in lane two. A really solid run from her. Second there is Abrams in lane seven, and Jürgen does take that vital third spot. Qualifies by right, 52.03 there, the winning time for Constantine. That's only a couple of clicks outside her season's best, so a really solid run. Not quite as quick. But for Abrams, the, the equation uncomplicated. You want to qualify from this heat, run hard. And she ran hard. Exactly. She did enough to qualify. She was out there in lane seven. And she ran a good 300. And I think w when you're in the outside, you don't lanes. You don't know until 300 meters exactly where you are. She pushed it a little further down the straight than uh, Sade did. Mm -hmm. But, right, she qualified. And I think this is a good performance for her. Yeah. Uh, Anil, she put the effort in that was needed. And no faffing about, no trying to be easy coming into the street and then look as as, as Oba well, says you're running blind on the outside clear. she just did what she had to if do. i'm coaching Oba Dele thompson fastest man 969 990 90, uh, i could control and tell him different strategies first round yes. second round when i am young and coming yes and i want to get my name out there and what there's no time for that March gas from up, the start March gas i don't want to hear about who you're going to control you have no control yes. give me all you have we will go and massage cool down get you ready moving on don't play yeah y you, you know uh, well i'm going to ask about recovery after her interview let's hear what she had to say to ricardo chambers Second in your heat, 52-23 through to the semifinals of the women's 400 meters. How pleased are you with your effort this morning? Um, it was a good effort. Felt pretty good. Just have to, you know... I'm sorry, I'm looking at the race. Yeah, not a bad race. Um, pleased with the effort. You know, onto the semis. Yeah, you just had a look at the race quickly. Um, anything you need to fix for the semifinals? Yeah, just need to keep relaxing a little bit more um, down the back stretch and also down the home stretch. So, yeah, I just had to work on that. Well, congrats on getting to the semis and all the best. Thank you. So, for an athlete like this gentleman who left everything out there to qualify, I mean, I know that, you know, there's this big word, uh, vicissitudes and peculiarities, and everybody is different. But there must be a general approach. Recovery from an effort as enervating as this. They have two days. Uh, the schedule is extremely generous mm -hmm. to 400-meter runners. So they have the next run, I believe, is on Friday. And if she makes it into the finals, will be on Sunday. So this is an effort where Anel was right. You put it all, all out there. Um, there are things that she can improve, which she did mention she will have to go harder it's also difficult because this is a morning session although this is our evening program yeah to get up and to run a hard race this early in the morning it, it's difficult your body's you, you, they're they're in a different time zone from from the united states where some where she's training and even from the caribbean so to get your sleeping under control to be to get used to the weather all these different things the call room situation it's it's a lot to deal with and even though she's been through some of this before it's still a morning race and what you would have noticed at the world championships they ran a lot of their qualifying rounds in the semifinals in the evening because yes. that's when athletes typically give their best yes so i assume they'll be running the semifinals in the evening and that perhaps will make her more comfortable her body will be awake and and hopefully she has a better run then yeah what he's talking about there and what athletes have to understand is when you sleep, uh, not only does your body recover and create growth hormone, but your body dehydrates. So when you wake up in the morning, some athletes, depending on their individual 
uh, water retention could lose up to two pounds of, of water while you're asleep. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do if you're preparing for a morning run or swim is begin to aggressively attack your dehydration. So as you wake up, before you brush your teeth, drink a 250 mils of, of water. Brush your teeth, drink a next one. You go to the toilet, drink some more water. Eat your breakfast, do what you normally do, drink some water. You're warming up, drink some water. So that by 10 a.m., your body, you want it hydrated as if it was 4 p.m. Yeah. So that's what you, 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 and some people may need some caffeine. But if you take caffeine, you've got to drink more water because yeah. caffeine yeah. dehydrates you. Yeah. So it's a very thin balance. But what we learned there from that interview is the pain of a 400. Yes. The pain shuts down the brain. Yes. You can't do no interview and watch no TV and, and, and answer what and, and chapel, process questions. And process question. The lactic acid just showing you that recovery is necessary. And to answer your point, while you've got two days, the most important time of recovery is right then and there. Right. The first 45 minutes. You've got to get out there, get on the track. Start back up at about 70% of your speed for at least a minute and a half and break it down 60%, 40%. Then end up walking for 20 minutes, continuously rehydrating, biting a banana and so on. Then do your stretching for 20, 25 minutes. Then hit the massage table. Then you go back and do some more stretching at home and so on. That's the most important part to recover. Um, but she will need it after that effort. Absolutely so. All right, let's go to Nathan Allen in the men's 400 meters now. There's no effort here from Alan, the Jamaican in lane six at the moment. He's having an absolute stroll. Conte of Sierra Leone trying to keep in the mix in lane number three. But Alan of Jamaica not even out of third gear here. Gilbert of Trinidad and Tobago looking to get an automatic spot in lane number seven. Scotch of Botswana will finish in second. 45.17 seconds. Nathan, 45.18, that looked really good from the first three or four steps. Talk me through that one and how you're feeling. I'm thankful. A few weeks ago, I couldn't make the semi-final World Championships, and I was heartbroken. I am still hurting, but 45.17, fast as I've run in years, <laughs> I am happy. How much confidence have you taken from that outstanding relay leg at the World Championship that brought us, helped to bring us the silver medal? I mean, my coach has been telling me that I'm in shape, I've been practicing well, but track and field is about races. You gotta run, you know, you, you gotta get like a feel of the event. And race by race, it is showing me that, you know, I can get back to being my best. Yeah, and so the field seems to be coming back, so all the best for the semi finals. Thank you very much. Again, Oba, another athlete who seemed to have aced the eye test. But the post-race interview suggests that a lot of energy was expended. Is it, as the, as, as, uh, is it the same case that you made for Shade Williams to say, well, George, this would be the first serious run since the World Championships. This one is just to get the cobwebs out. Is that the case with him, why he was breathing so hard at the end, despite the apparent ease with which he took charge of that race and finished well first off i appreciate the the brutal honesty that we've been getting in these interviews i think it's it's a good it's really insightful into the minds of the athletes uh he's in a different position than Shade. she yeah. is running two seconds slower than what she ran yeah. a couple of days ago he is ascending yeah so this is his best time in many years he looked really good but one of the, the key things that he said is that his coach says that he's in good shape mm. Until you internalize that and it becomes your own, mm. then you're not going to be able to perform at the level of your training. So hopefully this is a good boost for him to, 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 to signify, indeed, what I've been doing at training, I can now do here in competition. He said races matter. It is true. Races do matter. This was a, a very easy-looking performance. Hopefully he can replicate this. If he can, his best is 44-13. This is still a second away. But it looks like he, if he's ascending, or let's say descending toward yes. that, yes, and he looks to be in really good shape. Coach, I, I was going to come to you with that point. The apparent, uh, I don't want to put it as strong as discordance, but it is what it is because he says, and, 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 and over caught it, my coach says, rather than I believe I am. What is the likely 
conflict that that may cause within the man Nathan well as, as a coach first of all I'm happy that he respects his coach so much to say that he knows but he has got to internalize it to the point that I agree with my coach mm. I know that I'm ready I get the I he's there yet agree he, with the coach correct he's not there yet but if they run back producers if y'all good run back this is why track and feel so sweet run back the last hundred day. look at Botswana you see why track and feel so sweet this man Jamaican is running so smooth that the Botswana now looks like he never ran a race in his life his whole technique goes out of whack because this gentleman next to him in his peripheral vision in his direct view where he can see him has shattered him and then you see my trini boy sweet too bad rose but pretending that he is enough <laughs> too because he wants to show hey i coming through for the small cue <laughs> and i looking good but struck and feel is sweet too bad but 400 meters you can't hide you know, you look good, you look sweet, you look controlled, but the lactic are still, still coming. It's a long sprint, okay. 45 seconds of sprint. It ain't no slow thing, you know, 400. It ain't no 3,000 where you could go with your heart rate at 150 and so on. From the time you take off by the, at 200 meters, your heart rate done hitting 175, 180. So lactic acid start a pump. By the time you reach 100 meters, you can't even lift your leg. You feel you go pull your muscles. So they look good. They better recover or else their times will drop in the semis. Yeah, which is why we as sportscasters always tell people that we, we, we refer to the 100 and the 200 meters as the short sprints. Because make no mistake, the 400 meters is a flat out sprint for one lap. Let's see what Anthony Cox did. Another Jamaican uh, through to the semifinals of the men's 400 meters. Through the first 200 in that blue strip. He's a 45-8 performer this year, but he leads at the moment by quite some margin. Solomon going okay right in the centre. Inside him, the Jamaican investor of Anthony Cox is moving well around the second bend as they come into the straight. Kumaraj has given 101% through the first 300. Now he's chased down by the big figure of Cox, the Jamaican, who looks very strong for the last 50. Solomon follows him through, and he's under real pressure here for third place, and I think he just loses out there to Golden Heath from Namibia who gets third spot. It is the first three, remember, who go through by right. And I think... Cox had to work for that, though, over. Yeah, but he looked strong. His mm. personal best is 45-43, which I th believe he did this year. 45-51, mm -hmm. first round. He looked really good. I was impressed. Um, sometimes athletes coming off of that last turn, as Anna was talking about, that lactic acid is there. You start to panic. You see someone ahead of you. You go chase them, or you, or you try to do the calculus. Do I really want to chase this early? He was confident. He ran between about uh, 300 to around 350 meters really well. Mm -hmm. He overtook, took control of the race, and I think he was gearing down. So he looks to be in good position for the semifinals. I want you to watch the Australian now, George. Watch the Australian in the last 100 meters. This, he's running as if he's doing it in a Hawaii on hot coals and glass. Watch when lactic acid has overtaken your body. And all you know to do instinctively is that your coach told you, lift your knees, relax, swing your arms. Look at the Australian now with 80 meters, 70 meters to go. Look at, <laughs> he's looking like he's running on hot coals. Yeah. It's like yeah. a robotic yeah. motion. Yeah. That's yeah. the yeah. pain that yeah. we're talking about. If yeah. you haven't felt that pain, you don't know what it is to feel pain. <laughs> yeah, because I, as you rightly said, I'm, I'm noticing noticing it now on the replay. I don't, I don't overknows it's better than us. The head goes down into the neck or into the shoulders. Yeah, you, you, you can tell that. That, 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 that is there. a rough race. That's why a lot of people don't go in the 400. Exactly. Yeah, please, do we have a list of all of the um, Caribbean men who are through to the semis of the 400 meters? We had that list earlier, but all right, so, 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 so we, we, we can talk about that. But generally, gentlemen, based on what you've seen, let's start with the men first. Uh, the 400 meters, I is there an outstanding uh, qualifier that the rest are running to catch, or do you see this as wide open? Well, there's uh, Matthew Hudson Smith, who came th running for England, who yeah. came third at the recently concluded World Championship. So he's coming off of a big high. Mm -hmm. he, his personal best is the fast, is the second fastest, I believe, in the field. Um, but he's run 40, 
four thirty-five, I believe. No, this not year. The, not the, coming back to you, Omar. So these are the Jama the Caribbean men, beg your pardon, who've qualified for the semis. Uh, three Jamaicans: Powell, Cox, Allen, uh, TNT's Guevara, uh, Grenada's Michael Francois, Barbados Jonathan Jones, of course, uh, looking sweet in his heat. I thought Russell from the Bahamas and the Norwegian Kyle Gale through. So you're saying that Hudson Smith and I saw Hudson Smith on his chest, and immediately I thought of HSI, uh, Hudson yeah, Smith yeah. Institute. Right. We, we know that, right? So, so I, 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 I have him as perhaps an exceptional one. But the point I want to you to associate yourself with me, me making is that I think beyond that, and Jonathan Jones, those two outstanding, yeah. I think it's 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 a it's a wide open thing, which is good for competition. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty wide open. So the semifinals, what's going to matter, I believe, is what Anno talked about, how they recover, what they do in the next two days. The thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to overrest because with the two days off, you can lose your rhythm in running. So sometimes it's better to be running more consistently mm. so your body is, stays in that zone and your mind stays in that zone. It doesn't drift. Uh, we see here Jonathan Jones just taking the easy run, 44-43 for a new national record earlier this year and made the finals at World Championships in the 400. So he's had a long season. I spoke with him. He's, he is fatigued. I believe this will be his last race. But I think the Caribbean's in really good position. Hopefully we have some good lanes. People come ready to run. I think it's going to be in the evening. That'll suit them. And I expect to see some good performances. And it, 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 it's bad for me that I expect the English to bottle everything. So Hudson Smith will have to do it for me first before I, I, I anoint him favorite. I looked at Jones and I looked at Allen and I thought, these two young men, if, 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 if their first run performance is the baseline, meaning that they won't go below that, the performance is that they'll produce subsequently will be better than that. I think that they have an outstanding chance at the prettiest medal of the lot. On paper, England favorite. From the first round, Jones, clear favorite, looks good, looks comfortable. Would like to see him in a lane five, you know, so that he can judge the race properly. Disappointed that a country with one of the greatest 400 histories, 4x400 four world record, Trinidad and Tobago, my beloved country, Guevara has to take Yampi and water out of our eye. He's got to get into that final. A 400 Commonwealth final without a Trinbegonian, that is like doubles without pepper. That is like corn soup without pigtail. It cannot happen. So Guevara, for your boy, please get in the final. We saw a 100 meters final without a Caribbean man, so I wouldn't be surprised if the 400 gives us more of the same, and it's going to be misery for Adina Roberts. We take a break when we come back. We talk about some swimming. Commonwealth Tonight continues on Sportsmax and all our platforms. Uh, now is a good time to remind those of you who haven't heard it. I mean, we've been repeating it ad nauseum and we have some more to go. Seven channels on the Sportsmax app offer the Commonwealth Games live and uninterrupted. Seven channels. We have Sportsmax Plus, And then when you scroll along at the top of the tab, you'll see six Commonwealth Games channels. Commonwealth Games 1, 2, three four five and six so when you add those six to sports max plus seven channels on the app that are giving you uh, the coverage live and uninterrupted so if whatever is going on on sports max or sports max 2 is not to your liking and then you look at the schedule and you see an event that says live and you're wondering where you can watch it i wonder no more just go to the google uh, play store or the app store download the sports max app and you will be in business all right swimming is what we're going to talk about now because the man from sweet sweet TNT, Dylan Carter. Well, let's look at this race. The men's 50-meter freestyle. The final, Benjamin Proud, lane four. The man that they're all gunning for. Oh, this is going to be a race. Take your marks. Reaction time. All in form in this round. And they are absolutely level to go with that. Proud just slightly quicker than Boris from the start. 
It was able to have the fastest reaction, but Ben is starting to pull out in front. But Dylan Carls are in lane two, that black hat, starting to come through. But you've got Lewis Burris. He's coming through. Ben Proud, Lewis Burris. Ben Proud's going to get this. Burris maybe for second place. Yes! It's an England one, two. Ben Proud, Lewis Burris in second place. And Josh Edwards for Canada in third. Yeah, when well, you've heard me talk about the English bottling it, they haven't bottled anything in the pool. Benjamin Proud winning the 50 meters freestyle and beating his countrymen in front of a partisan crowd. And yeah, he has his fans out in support. And they even brought a banner for him. Anil Roberts, Ben Proud, someone you spoke about, uh, spoke highly about at the start of these games. Well, talk to me first. Let's start your analysis of this event, if you may, with the, the performance of that man, Dylan Carter. Well, first and foremost, Dylan Carter, based on the form from the 50 Butterfly, he should have just scraped into this final and probably come seventh. The fact that he came fourth and got down to 22.10 in the current physiological state that he's in shows what a man of class he is. What's that and physiological state? That physiological state is overrested, not strong enough, anaerobic capacity declined, starting, no power, no uh, taking an extra stroke, just not ready, just overrested. Mm -hmm. He's on the other side coming down. But because of his experience, his passion, love of country, and love of the sport, he figured out a way to get up. He had to rest the backstroke. He had to focus his mind there, and he just missed out on a medal. He went 22-1-0 when his body was really re only ready for something like 22-4. That shows the caliber of an athlete. And I must say, there's another Trini who got bronze. That's Canada flag, but that is born in Trinidad and Tobago, Edwards there. Brilliant swimmer. He's not at his best right now, but look to him for the Olympics 2024. 100 freestyle, 100 fly, 50 free for Canada and the Caribbean. Um, Bahamas was excellent. Lamar Great Taylor, swim. yeah. Great swim, national record, young fella. Lots of little improvements to be made, but Bahamas has a, a tradition so from Murray coming forward. Uh, Vanderpool Wallace, the female sprinter of the 50 freestyle sprint. So he'll get some good advice along the way. Benjamin Proud. Well, when you look at him, he looks like he should be in a Mr. Olympia bodybuilding contest. Extremely ripped, extremely pus uh, full of muscle. Back about looks like eight, a Bayesian. <laughs> about eight years ago, <laughs> I won't say anything, but eight the years, Bayesians are big on bodybuilding. Eight, That's eight, right. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Eight years ago, he tested positive and so on. So I don't know, but he looks very fit and very fast and unstoppable to swim 21 36. And it looked like he still had a little bit on the accelerator. Could have probably approached Cesar CLO's world record of 29 1 who also tested positive from Brazil oh. after winning um, and so on. But congratulations to them. Look good, look unstoppable. But Dylan Carter, well done, my brother. I am proud of that. No medal, but I like the fight. I like the attitude. Whether you're ready or you're not ready, you're as an elite athlete, you go there to perform your best. Hats off to Dylan Carter. Well done. Enough respect. So, so, so two finals, two fourth place finishes, and one semifinal that he didn't turn up for the start of. He, he, he scratched out. But let Correctly. me ask. But let, Good but, decision. Yeah, yeah. But let me ask you this, though. I, I know that you've often delivered, uh, I'm not going to say sermons. You don't deliver sermons. You deliver treaties on a coach's handling of an athlete and an athlete's program and an athlete being primed to deliver their best at a championship of significance. We would accept that swimming-wise, the Commonwealth Games very, very high level because the best swimming countries in the world are in the Commonwealth, save and except for the USA. They have the Aussies are here, the English or UK here as well. Why is it that Carter came to these games, my language now, you may mm. express it differently, less than optimum or less than optimal to the extent that you say physiologically he wasn't all together because bits and pieces were not quite right. Well, because in swimming, 
the science is, is easy. You can study it to work hard, to train hard, to prepare the body. You can understand the energy systems, what you're working at, your base, your aerobic capacity, how you build your, your cycles on one on top of the other into the competitive stages, how you develop, how you work in the gym, cross train, come into the pool, hit your anaerobic threshold, get it up so that your lactic acid doesn't build up. Then you have to do your ATP, CP, sprinting to produce that power and that speed. That's the easy part because the science shows you what to do. You read a book, you follow it. The difficult part where coaching becomes an art is the taper period, the rest period. If I coach Obadele and I coach George, two different human beings, different mentally, physiologically, physically, different events, different numbers, different attitudes. Some get nervous. You have to get inside the mind, body, heart, and soul of your athlete and tailor make a, a taper period. Some, that's a rest period where you're trying from all the hard work to get the best results. Every single athlete is different. So anytime you see coaches with 10 swimmers and they're on a chalkboard and they say, all they all do that, they're not bright because you need 10 chalkboards, one for each athlete. So therefore, in the case of Dylan Carter, what the coach has to understand is, yes, World Championships was the goal, June 17th to June 22nd. You hit there. You want to hit because that's your main goal for the season. That's where you start and you move backwards to plan, plan your training program. But you also know, four weeks later, Commonwealth Games, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Two days rest, get back in the gym, get him back up, check his threshold, do as little work as possible, but as much as to maintain what I've gained. And they miss that part. Yeah, and, 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 and the testimony to the class of the man as a swimmer and the fact that he's a highly intelligent lad, is that, you remember the, the, the interview after the 50 meters he uh, knew it. butterfly, when mm -hmm. he, he spoke about what he lacked, what he yeah. didn't have. He didn't have and the pop. And still, yeah. he was classy enough to take himself to fourth in two finals and missing a medal, especially the first one, by, by inches. By inches. And that's why I said enough respect. Because anybody can do it when you're feeling good and you're right on and you're ready. That's built for you. Your coach has done that for you. You just have to get up, turn on the lights, and press play. But when you're not on, when you're a little off, that's when you, all your culture, all your belief, all your passion in the sport, that's when you show what you are about. That's when you show that I came here for a medal. And that's what Dylan Carter did. He missed my oomph. But I'm proud of that fifth day free because that shows a desire to be great. And once you have a desire to be great as a coach, I want to get smarter. I want to apologize to you if I made a mistake. I say, my brother, I'm sorry. We're going to get it right. 2024, we have 100 free. We have 100 fly and 50 free. Remember, we don't have 50 fly in the Olympics. So I will go up now. Start to build up his aerobic capacity, aiming at that 100 free. You know Liendo's going to be there. You know Popovich is going to be there. Chalmers is looking good. The Americans going to bring two solid ones. You need to get down to 47.3 in 100 freestyle. Dylan Carter can do that. You need to get down to 50.5 in 100 fly. He can do that. I think we've been focusing a bit too much on the 50s alone. The Olympics, the only 50 is the 50 free, which is not his best, best event. I would be going 100 fly, 100 free for Olympic podium with Carter. He's a supreme talent, and he requires the exact amount of work and correct planning. It's like a diamond, and you've got to treat it with care. Yeah, we're going to the break. Confucius said uh, everybody can find the switch after the light has been turned on. Only the special ones can find the switch in the dark. Carter, according to the Anil Roberts theory, is a special one. We break when we come back. We talk about the schedule for Thursday.
All right, back with us on Commonwealth tonight. We are talking about diving now and during the night wisdom because he's representing Jamaica in that event. And uh, it's, 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 it's a rare thing to be talking about a Caribbean athlete. Uh, engaged in diving it is very very competitive for those of you who follow your british news especially your british tabloid news you will well know the exploits of one tom daly him of the luminescent smile uh you in the night wisdom is the jamaican man who is making his way in that event and we caught up with him he had a bit to say about his life with prospects at the commonwealth games oh we don't we, we, we don't have that interview with you in the night wisdom uh, let's rather let's take a preview. Let, well, let's let's get an idea of what United United Wisdom is poised to do at these Commonwealth Games. Let Anil uh, Roberts break that down for us. Well, first of all, it's great to have a Caribbean athlete in diving. Now, diving is a very specific sport, and as you know, there, there's springboard diving, different heights, and then there is the platform diving, which you've got to be kind of insane to do. When you walk up and climb up to a 10-meter platform, for a normal human being to just jump off feet first, you've got to have some cojones, you understand? So when you go there now to stand up on it backwards and make flips inside of a concrete thing to go and, and hit the water at X amount of miles per hour that could pop your neck, break your back, and put you in a wheelchair, diving is not a sport to play with. So it requires specialty coaching, specialty equipment, special programs in trinidad and tobago now we have the greatest aquatic center with one of the best diving wells diving boards and dry dive pits to teach children yet not one child has dived there yet because there are no coaches and that's been open seven years now um, but jamaica is leading the way of course we have a long way to go he has been gradually getting better and scoring and the fives and sixes moving up. Uh, obviously, the Chinese are some of the best in diving, both men's, women's, pairs, synchronized diving, platform, springboard. Um, so ideally, what we need to do is, since the Caribbean loves to have a relationship with China, nothing wrong with that, but tell them bring their diving coaches to the Caribbean so that we could learn to compete properly. So we look forward to a good performance. It will be exciting. Nice to see the Jamaica flag being raised in, at the diving well. Yeah, in exchange for some track and field coaches. Give up some diving coaches, we send you some sprinting coaches. Correct. They're good. Fear I, I don't know if that will help because you have to send some of the genetics. When I walk around Jamaica here, I'm seeing the genes that produces the speed, my brother. And you're, looking, you're seeing the T-shirts as well, eh? Definitely. There you go. Uh, Oba, <laughs> on, on, on Thursday's day, uh, where, where the athletics program oh, yeah. is concerned, what are the events that you're most looking forward to seeing? Um, we have the start of the 200s, 200s mm -hmm. men and women. So Elaine thompson Hero would we'll find out tomorrow if she turns up. We do have um, Tanya Gaither from the Bahamas. She's in good form. Um, also in the men, uh, Jareen Richards, who yeah. is the defending champion, uh, I think he's going to renew his rivalry with uh, Zarnell Hughes. You remember Hughes crossed the line first in 2018. Mm -hmm. He was out to a big start, and Richards caught up with him, and they bumped hands. They didn't bump hands. <laughs> Hughes felt the speed of the Trinity coming. Hughes felt the speed of the man from Point <laughs> Fortin coming through and tried to block him. Yes. And said, slow down. Don't yeah. put your hand in my lane. Leave me. Let me pass. And he was disqualified. Yes. yes. So, 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 so Richards, he, he set a new personal best this year of, 20, of 1983. He won the World Indoor Championships in the 400 meters, uh, uses there, as I said. We also have the, the women's 400 meter hurdles, the three Jamaicans. Uh, they're poised. I think they can, they can sweep. They're the, the class of the field. So those are the main events for tomorrow. In addition to the 110 meter final, yes, men's final. Parchment Broadbill. Yes. Yeah. Let me ask uh, uh, Obadele a question. Of course. If a woman could run 50.68 going over hurdles, what would she do in a flat 400? I think in time, he's talking about... Sidney McLaughlin. Yes, the world record holder mm. who just ran 50-68 over hurdles. Um, I think one day we will, we'll be able to see that. I, what I suspect is that they'll probably look to go into the 47s and maybe... Well, the world record is 47.50, I believe, or I think... Thereabouts. Yeah. And it hasn't uh, been approaching a long time. Not at least in coming up. Gold to medal times 40, is like 40 48, 70. Yeah. yeah, so I think she may be the closest one to get there if they focus on that. All right. So the schedule has netball as well. Jamaica against Australia. Talk to me now, Adil. That is the game. 
What time is that? Sports Max, get your app. Turn on your TV. Jamaica, Australia. This is the game I want to see. I telling you, Jamaica is going to take it if all of us sit down and watch it and pray at the same time. The coach, Connie Francis, has to have a plan to confuse and keep the Australians moving. They're going to play the game down to the last second. Jamaica has the goal shoot, the time, the best defense, the movement. They cannot throw away the ball. They have to protect it. They have to move, keep play together, keep their substitutions moving moving the brain by the time that game is done the coaching staff brain must be steaming because that is the game we came for that's the gold medal i want george davis jamaica australia yep all right so the jamaicans are perfect so far at the tournament so too are the Aussies, both unbeaten four from four and they go into that game in rude health both teams jamaica the only team at these commonwealth games to crack 100 points they did so against barbados all no right. comment. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Over there. You're bad. You're bad. That was nice. You're bad. You're bad. No, 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 no. It, it, it's, it's a matter of record. It's a yeah? matter of but, record. But, but I, will, I will say this much. <laughs> if it gives the Jamaican, and it should have given the Jamaicans confidence. Yes. So we as a Caribbean we You're working together. Absolutely. Right. I like yeah. it. I like it. I like we, it. We're like helping Jamaica. Exactly. Cooperation by association. Yeah. There you go. All right. I'm glad so. they leave me out of that because <laughs> I get 8 to 24. But it's all right. All right. So that's it. So the schedule for tomorrow. Just remember, just remember before we go, that seven channels are on the Sportsmax app for you to enjoy the Commonwealth Game Sportsmax Plus and Commonwealth Game Channel 1 through 2, 6 or 7 channels. Download the Sportsmax app from the Google Play Store on the App Store and you can watch the event of your choice uninterrupted. Tomorrow is going to be another big day. The Caribbean continues the medal hunt. Trinidad and Tobago already on the board three times. Uh, Jareem Richards looking to add something else for them and he is poised to do so. As Oba said, that clash with Zarnell Hughes is worth... Uh, dropping a lot of things to be able to enjoy. And then the Jamaicans go hunting in the 400 meters hurdles as well. And uh, yeah, let, this is what the schedule looks like before we go. Let's just show it to you before we flash out of here. So lawn bowls, table tennis, netball, Australia, Jamaica. That's 2 a.m., 3 a.m. outside Jamaica. The athletics program starts early from 2 a.m. on Sportsmax. And then we have Wales and Barbados. Let's see if Barbados can leave Birmingham with a W in their column for the netball competition. Cycling is on. Quarterfinal round of the boxing. The outstanding guy and his Kevin Alicock is still going strong in boxing. Let's cheer him on. The Commonwealth Tonight Show from 6.30 p.m. tomorrow evening. I think table tennis is on the athletics program. The afternoon segment starts from about 12.30 in Jamaica. We spoke about diving the springboard from midday on Sportsmax Plus. That was Sportsmax 2. That's at Sportsmax 2, yeah, at the beach volleyball from about 10 a.m. on Sportsmax. Again, all those times are Jamaica times. That's day 7. Yeah, this has been day 6. It's been a pleasure of ours to have presented this review show for you. And we look forward to sitting with you on Thursday. <laughs>